thank you for all the fathers, and thank you for being the ultimate father. Lord, I just ask that you be with this service, be with Brother Jimmy as he delivers our message, be with Deborah as she leads us in song. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you are a first time guest or you got questions, comments, there's a connect card that's in the seat in front of you. We ask that you fill it out and turn it into one of the ushers as you leave. So, uh, this week BBS's registration has opened. If you haven't registered yet, we got a sign up. You can scan a little QR code up to the back or to sign the sheet. We're also looking for volunteers. So next Sunday we, is our quarterly business meeting after services, and we will be voting on the budget. So if you want to look at a copy of the budget, they're available in the foyer in the back. Uh, the Recovery Soldiers is looking for uh, discipleship volunteers, and if you can help in that, uh, contact Nate Walker. And the Baby Bottle Fundraiser is wrapping up today, so please make sure and put your bottles in the back of the foyer. So next Sunday, we will be taking up a love offering for the Nicaragua mission trip. And the sign-ups for the Texas County Baptist Association camps, you can either sign up back there or go to the website. So at this time, let's start our service. Good morning and happy Father's Day. Um, I am up here because my job title is uh, Family Life Director, but I am not a father and I have never been a father, no surprise. Um, but I wanted to, so I can't tell you how to father. I can't tell you how to dad. I've never done that. I can tell you that where we find God's vision for that is in the Word. Um, and I wanted to let you know that just by being here and bringing your families here, that's a huge step in um, joining in the vision for what um, you are already submitting yourself to um, the parenting that God has already promised us. And so when we learn to parent um, as we are being parented by Him, um, that is how it is going to be fleshed out in our daily lives. We're going to learn from Him how to parent our children um, in grace. And um, I would, I'd like to pray over. Um, I found a prayer that has um, several of the scriptures, scriptures um, in, in His Word um, about being a father or how He is a father to us. Um, and so I'm going to pray over the, um, over our fathers today. And then I'm also going to let you know that at the end of the service, there is going to be, our church has a gift for any fathers in the room. Um, there is one, there is going to be a cart back in the back, and then there's going to be a cart here. So if you have kids, then you need to go pick them up. You can just get it here. Um, that's going to be at the very end. So if you would um, bow your heads and pray with me. Father in heaven, on this day when fathers are being remembered and honored throughout the world. We honor you, the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. First John 3, 1 John 3.1 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. God, we acknowledge today that apart from Jesus Christ, we could only fall back in fear at the thought of approaching a God so holy, righteous, and just. But your word says that we did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Our debt has been paid. We are no longer your enemies, but dearly loved children. Enable all those who have trusted in the death and resurrection of Jesus to live in the good of that reality. Father, we thank you for the fathers among us, soon to be fathers, young fathers, middle-aged fathers, old fathers, grandfathers, and men who are discipling younger men. Thank you for the sacrifices they, they make in their desire to reflect your heart to their children. Make them aware of, of the privilege, the gift, and responsibility of fatherhood. Cause them not to provoke their children to anger, but to leave them in your gracious discipline and instruction. Refresh those who are weary with fresh strength for the task. May they know your spirit's power in their weakness. We thank you for our fathers, whom you especially, specifically chose for us, whether by natural birth adoption, 
or by circumstance. For those who had good fathers, we thank you for their example, their care, their counsel, their presence in our lives, and may we honor them appropriately through our words and our deeds. For those who don't have good memories of their fathers, we pray that you would be strengthened with power through your spirit in their inner being so that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith, that they would know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. We pray for patience to understand, mercy to forgive, and courage to stand fast in the truth of the gospel. For those fathers who are estranged from a child, or their children, or anyone who is unreconciled with their own father, would you bring to pass this promise in Malachi 4, 6, and you will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers. God, if revival starts anywhere, we know that it's here in our families. For those who have never known their father, may they be more aware than ever that you are the father of the fatherless, and that nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, protect our hearts as we protect families from the evils of the world around us. Thank you that you assured us of our Heavenly Father's care when you said to look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. May we live in the realization of that care moment by moment, seeking to love you more each day with our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and strive to love, lead, and steward well the hearts of those that we find looking to our leadership as we follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. So please stand if you're able and let's begin worship.
morning. I would uh, like to add just a little bit. Trevor, or I'm sorry, uh, Tyson was talking about the budgets are in the back. Uh, really appreciate if you would grab a copy of that, go over it. If you have questions, ask them this week before the next Sunday. Uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions then, but if you would, could look at it and go over it beforehand. Uh, 38 years ago, I started teaching. And one of the first things I learned when I was teaching was you never know what someone else is going through when you have a relationship with them. And my very first year teaching, I had a young lady that uh, was showing up late for rehearsals. She was giving a lot of attitude. And I talked to her one day after classes to try to find out what was going on and found out she was being sexually abused by her brothers, by an uncle. And it just broke my heart. The thing we wanted, we wanted the kids to come to school and learn. Many kids go through things like that. Years later, I learned, or uh, during a parent-teacher conference, the school I was teaching at had a policy that if the parents of students getting D's or F's didn't show up to parent-teacher conference, we had to call them. We had to keep a log to turn it in to the one that had D's or F's in our class. And I called one young man's class, uh, dad, and uh, the kid was a good student. He just wasn't turning in his work. And I called his dad just to tell him, you know, he's got to turn in this. And all I heard his dad do was cussing every word you can imagine. Hollering at his son, I could hear his son in the background on the phone, and I could hear him beating his son. And I just begged him to stop, please stop, and I got off the phone. Sometimes there may be a customer come in your store that just gives you all kinds of grief, just as mean as can be to you. And you find out later that they're dying of a severely painful type of bone cancer. Sometimes the waitress that you give a hard time to at the restaurant. Husband just left her with three kids under 10 years old. She's juggling three jobs trying to raise them and stay afloat. We never know what people are going through. I want to read from the book of Matthew, and this is something that has been in my heart my whole life. That I'm, anytime I'm dealing with people. And I'm adding a few extra verses to what I originally turned in, so I apologize, they won't all be up at the top. But Jesus is talking to his disciples in the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. And I'm going to start at chapter 34, or verse 34, I'm sorry. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see a, a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he would say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also answered, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or, or a stranger or needing clothes or sick and in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. You bow your heads. Divine grace, Heavenly Father, we, we praise you, dear Father. And 
We recognize your omnipotence, dear Father. We recognize your, your greatness, dear Father. We recognize your faithfulness. We just pray, dear Father, that as we walk through life, that uh, we can always keep you in our minds as we deal with other people, and that we can be the light, your light shining through us, dear Father, instead of the darkness. We just pray that you'll be with the service, be with uh, Brother Jimmy this morning as he brings the message. And just pray that uh, you will lay on each and every heart what needs to be heard this morning. We ask all things through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
might have should have brought my sunglasses. <laughs> Oh, I forgot I got to stand in front of the mic today. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Um, one thing that I'm so excited about is that, uh, and we just heard it all through these messages, that uh, God allows us to do stuff for Him. And just, just think about that. God allows us to father a child, to raise a child. God allows us to give to the poor, give to the sick, like the message that that guy brought earlier. God allows us to praise and worship Him. God allows us to do so much, doesn't He? He just loves our involvement in every day of our life. Um, and and I'm, I'm just so excited because I'm up here and I'm, I'm, I'm involved. And, and I hope you guys are involved in something. Uh, I hope you're involved in some kind of a ministry or serving the Lord some some way or somehow uh, in your daily life. Because um, today we're going to be talking about being involved. We're going to be talking about whose whose house are you building, anyways? Um, and today is a it's a pretty rough message. Um, I hope it brings some conviction. Because it brought a lot of conviction to my heart when God was preparing this uh, in me. And we're going to be in the book of Haggai, starting in verse 1 today. Before I get started, though, I'd like to say a little prayer. I want to lift up Trevor this morning. Uh, he, he messaged me this morning and said he had a couple messages that he was going to be delivering in Springfield. So, uh, as as much as a barrel of emotions that I am this morning, I just couldn't think about doing two of these in one day. Um, I just couldn't think about doing this every Sunday because, man, I am a barrel of emotions. And uh, so when we get up here and we stammer and we stutter, just give us a little grace because <laughs> the emotions run high sometimes. So anyways, let's pray this morning. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, I just... Uh, I know you don't need us, but you love our involvement. And today I am just so humble because of that. And Father, I just uh, pray for Trevor today as he is bringing a message, um, two of them as a matter of fact. And I just, uh, I just pray for his heart. I just pray that uh, Father, you just give him boldness, give him strength. And uh, I pray the same for myself this morning. I pray that I just uh, speak whatever it is you want me to speak. I trust in You, God. I trust in uh, what You have revealed to me and what You have showed me. And today I just pray uh, that I can deliver it um, the way that You would see fit. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So I've been studying the book of Haggai and uh, we're studying our Friday night uh, Bible study. And these little books uh, in the Bible are amazing. Um, and if you haven't found Haggai yet, it's right in between the two Z's, Zephaniah and Zechariah. And uh, if you don't know where those are, just go to the New Testament, flip back three books, and you'll find the book of Haggai. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to read a little bit of this, and then we're going to have to go over to the book of Ezra just to get a little bit of history. Because so we've got to have a little bit of history with our message today. So starting in chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai, the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtai, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai, the prophet. Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses? while this house lies in ruins. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. <laughs> now let's, let's turn to the book of Ezra. and Because you're probably wondering what this passage just meant, and what it was talking about. And one thing I love about the Bible is it's mixed all throughout the pages. And it's always pointing to something. And the history is so important in the Old Testament. So if you turn with me to Ezra chapter 3, 
starting in verse 10. And there's a lot more, uh, really, read the first six chapters of Ezra if you want to really know about the rebuilding of the temple. But I'm going to start in, in chapter 3, verse 10. And it says, and when, the buildings laid, and when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests and their vestments came forward with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, the symbols to praise the Lord according to the direction of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. So you, you probably thought, well, there was already a temple, right? Well, the temple got destroyed. The temple got burned by the Babylonians. This is when they besieged the southern tribe of the Israelites. The northern tribe was already sieged, and now the southern tribe was sieged by the Babylonians. And they would be held captive for 70 years. And the reason they were held captive for 70 years, of course, was their disobedience. This was all part of God's plan. So when the Babylonians came, they set fire to the temple, burned it, destroyed it, took all the belongings out, and, and kept them. So now the Assyrians have come along and they've wiped out the Babylonians. And now the, the God has laid uh, on the heart of King Cyrus to, re to rebuild the temple. So they're in the process of rebuilding the temple. So the very first thing they do, of course, is build a foundation, just like what I just read to you. So they've got the foundation built, and man, they are... They are ecstatic. They are full of joy. I mean, they are, they are very excited. We got the foundation. It's a start. Now, this should bring joy to your heart right now. And you're probably thinking, why does this bring joy to my heart? Our foundation is already established, Amen. And, and what's what's our foundation? Jesus Christ. Um, you know, we didn't even have to do anything. He did it all. He established the foundation. And now we're building the church, which is the new temple, right? All of this is pointing prophecy and, and just pointing to Christ. Because 1 Corinthians 3.10, it says, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care of how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is our foundation. He is where it all starts and begins. The book of Acts chapter 4, starting in verse 11, it says, Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by Him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven being among men by which we must be saved. Not only is He the foundation, He is the cornerstone, right? Everything is based off of Him. Without a corner, there is no foundation because all the strength comes from the corner. He gives us the strength. Oh, man, I'm just amazed because of what He does and what He gives us and what He allows us to do uh, as I once, as I already talked about. So this foundation, it should really excite us, shouldn't it? Um, the foundation was started. Um, you know, they're, they're making headway. And then comes the book of Haggai. And what I just read to you, 15 years later, the book of Haggai, and he says, the people say it's not time to build my house. The foundation has been sitting there for 15 years. Now I want you to think about this. This church is here. It's, you guys are serving in it. You love meeting here with your family. And one day there's a devastation and it burns down. The only thing left sitting here is the foundation. And every day you drive by it and you say, I sure wish somebody would do something about that. I, you know, when's something going to happen? When, when are we going to build back? And then you just keep driving by it. Before long, the weeds start to grow up. It starts to cover and hide the foundation. Um, you keep saying to yourself, 
Well, I'm, sure, I'm sure somebody would do something about that. Or maybe you're the person that's always has an idea for something inside the church. Well, if you got an idea, do it. You know, if you think something needs done, talk to the people and do it. God, God's lives are involved there, right? We just, I just mentioned that He wants us to do stuff. He wants us to do stuff for Him. And as you would drive by every day and see this foundation, what else is missing? There's no worship, right? These people had no place to worship because they worshiped in the temple. That was, that was where the presence of God was. And that was where they would go and sacrifice for their sins. And uh, the Word of God would be read, the law of Moses, and, and they would just sit and soak. And they didn't even have that. But the thing that's really bothers me is uh, about this. They just kind of forgot about God, didn't they? It was almost like that 50 years, 50 to 70 years they were in captivity. Nobody spoke to the younger people about God. And then they started something and they're just sad. I mean, how many times in your life have you started something and then you just forget about it. You just put it off to the side. Uh, maybe you're building your own house, as it says in here. Uh, it's time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while my house lies in ruins. You know, this is all about bringing the glory to God is what this is about. Later on in this passage, God mentions that. David talks about building God a house for his uh, building the temple when he was the king. Because he was, uh, it bothered him that the ark was a tent and he lived in a paneled house. But that, that's a pretty big deal to live in a paneled house back then. It means cedar panel or wood, not a tent, not what they came out of Israel in. They were now living in homes while God's house lying in ruins. For 15 years, just sitting there, doing nothing. A foundation was laid, and there it was. One thing that I want, to, I want to speak into you today, fathers, mothers, and this has been the biggest help to me, and that comes from Matthew 6.33, and it says, But seek first the kingdom of God, and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You know, they were in this situation because they forgot about God. The book of Deuteronomy tells us about the blessings for obedience and then the curses for disobedience. And that's why they were in this position anyways. I remember one time, I want to tell you a story about my life one time. When I was, when I really felt like I was stepping right on the heels of God, like I was, I was seeking Him. I was doing exactly what this verse says. Me and my wife was going to Central, and I might have told this story, but uh, I want to share it again if I have. But we were going to Central, and we decided everybody there decided to build a new church. I got to be a part of that. I got to build a new church. And, built a new church and I had all these visions in my mind of what was going to take place the very first service. The very first service came about and it was the worst day of my life. Um, it, was, it was not what I, what I envisioned would happen that day. And that's, you know, it was what I had envisioned, what I thought would happen that day. Uh, I, thought our, I thought our worship would be different and we would do all this stuff and, and uh, just come to find out that what we had talked about of doing it, it just it just didn't come about so as time went on we lost our pastor and i got put into the interim role and then covid finally hit and it was me and my wife there for several sundays just me and my wife by ourselves and you know i would think to myself we spent almost two hundred thousand dollars here it's just me and my wife that's a hard pill to swallow when you think about it and you start doubting your relationship with God, and you start doubting about your walk, and you 
you, you start saying, telling yourself that maybe I wasn't the person to do this. And, uh, but I only knew one thing to do, and that was to seek Him. And I seeked Him. And you know, I started praying for stuff, and I saw these prayers come, through, come true. It was not prayers of any material or anything like that. It was the prayers of the Kingdom of God. It was to send people. It was to send families. It was to send kids. It was for help. And man, did God answer. He answered so much that I got plumb scared. I got plumb afraid. And I, I gave up what God had given me. And, uh, you know, I walked away from it. And, and that's been a really hard thing for, for me um, to know that, uh, you know, did I give up or, 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 or what happened? But one thing that I learned from God through that was if He calls on you to do something and you don't do it, He'll find somebody else to do it. And we see that in the book of Haggai. Because later on, he, he comes to the people. I'm going to finish reading, finish reading in verse 1. And he says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house, that I may take pleasure in it, and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, and behold, it came to you little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruins. While each of you busies himself with his own house. Did you hear that? While each of us busies himself with his own house, with his own things, with his own desires, with whatever it is that we do that takes us away from God. And he says, Therefore, the heavens above you have withheld the dew, and the earth was without its produce. And I have called for a drought on the land and the hills on the grain, the new wine, the oil on the, wall, on the, on the ground that brings forth on man and beast and on all their labors. Everything they did couldn't satisfy themselves. God called for a drought. He called for a, um, for the ground not to bring forth anything. And, and they found out that what they was doing just couldn't satisfy themselves. Um, God's the only thing that can satisfy us. And then it says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltai, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet. As the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Um, if we was to go back into Ezra, just below there in chapter 3, it tells why they quit building. It's because they were afraid. They were afraid of the people. So now, what I just read, it says that they feared the Lord. Um, they finally had fear in the right order. So they feared the Lord. Then Haggai the messenger said, I am, and the Lord declares, I am with you. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtai, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. And on the 24th day of the month, in the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. It took the Lord to stir up their hearts. Uh, like I said, if you don't do it, God will find somebody else. He will stir up the heart of somebody else. And you know what? I find it hard to believe that it took 15 years for them to, to get back to work on such a great possession towards the Lord. But then I look back on my own life and I find it hard to believe that it took so long for me to come in to know the Lord. But you know what? It says that He is with me. And He is with every one of you all today. God has a lot of patience for us Thank goodness for that, right? <laughs> I have a living testimony to God's patience. I wish I had as much patience uh, towards my own family 
as he does to us. But uh, he's working on that. And uh, and today, I just I just want you to know uh, what I want you to take away from this is what I read earlier, and that is to seek the kingdom of God first. And you know, and it says all these things will be added to you. And I would love to tell you what all those things are, but I think you need to find that out for yourself. I think you need to spend time in this Word. We can't just come to church every Sunday with our mouths open with a baby bottle waiting to be fed. You know, the Bible says we need to get off the milk. we got to get on the meat. If you want to get on the meat, go home, study the Word, apply it, spend time in prayer, and all that stuff that you need, God will show you. Because uh, He showed me in my life. It's, it's not about... Um, the other man, or what the other man is speaking, is about spending time with God. I mean, we learn from other men, yes. But the best thing that we can learn, and the best way that we can achieve Him, is to study His Word. Because um, He speaks through His Word. I'm, 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 I'm up here with not a no one, and God speaks through His Word. But God speaks through His Word to me because I've been in it. And, and you know, uh, it's start your day with it. And, and I, I, I know I say this probably every message, but I think it is so important. But start your day with it. Um, you know, quit uh, quit just waiting for somebody else. Take the initiative and do it. Apply it. Um, I started off this message saying, you know, that um, God wants us to do stuff, right? So put your feet to action and start doing it. Quit waiting. Uh, you know, it's Father's Day, and I just want to encourage you fathers. Like um, Jen said, you got a great start because you're here. Well, whatever you, whatever God speaks to you here, and whatever you learn from His Word, apply it. It's no good if we don't apply it to our family. Just take that and teach them. If you've got any questions, it's in, it's in this book. Everything we need to know is in this book and, and apply it. So today, I just, I just want to end this, this message today with uh, just a word of prayer for what we're doing in our lives. Um, you know, whose house are you building today? Is it the house of God or is it, uh, is it your paneled house? Is it, uh, is it your career? Is it, uh, you know, so many other things that I can mention. But if you give all that stuff to Him, you'll still be a part of it. But you got His guidance. And you got Him and His Word pouring into you and revealing and showing you things and directing you along the way. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank You for Your Word. I thank You for what it's done in my life. And today I just pray for pray over these people today that uh, whatever it is that keeps us from You, um, Father, that we will uh, lay some of that aside and spend some time with You. Father, that we would let You guide and direct us, lead our families, to teach our, kids, our children. Uh, but your ways are good, and we know that you are always with us. May we be faithful to that. May we be faithful to you. And most of all, Father, may we always be the light in this dark world. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Yeah.